All right, what's up? Welcome to Buffy's Angels. We're your angels, D Train, Daniel Ehrenberg, and over there, Logan Adair. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're jacked back into the show. <laughs> and uh, we're covering two more episodes this week. It's not a tumor. Uh, we're doing the puppet show and nightmares. All right, two non-classics but we'll oh talk really about i really anyway. enjoyed them. i was about to say this is the best block we've had since episodes three and four wow since- that's wild to me i am not a fan of the puppet show episode i i'm not really a fan of nightmares either but some people are nightmares uh shows up high on certain lists it's the highest imdb score since the f- since the angel that doesn't surprise me that much it's also people licking the taint of joss whedon because he has a writing credit on this one but uh, let's get into Puppet Show first, I suppose. Um, and I guess we'll start with the day it came out, huh? May 5th, 1997. What a day in American history. Hypnotized by the notorious B.I.G. still tearing up the charts. Uh, what else we got? I'll tell you what was going on on TV that night, Logan. Mm-hmm. NBC aired a part two of a miniseries. Robin Cook's Invasion. Are you familiar with this book? No, of course not. That was, Ro- well, of course not. Robin Cook was a popular author in the 90s, you know, maybe like after Stephen King and John Grisham and Dean Koontz, you got Robin Cook, all right? And uh, to be honest, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, but I've read some of their books, including Invasion, which is an alien novel, all right? It's about like, First, you think it's like like the Andromeda strain or something, like it's a bug going around, like contagion, but then it turns out the bug is alien, all right? And but they, this was also a show? Well, they made a miniseries adaptation of the novel because the novel was a big hit, and the, no, the miniseries starred Luke Perry and Kim Cattrall. Wow, that's pretty good. That is pretty good, man. This was Luke Perry, like right before he went back to nine hundred two one zero. He was like speaking like, of Buffy. Good point. Yeah, Pike is starring in this miniseries. Wait, I'll tell you what. Else, what? Wait, isn't wait isn't Pike that other guy? No, he's Pike. Wait, but isn't Pike a guy from this show? Pike is Luke Perry in Buffy. Isn't there another character that's supposed to come up at some point that I'm not that I don't know yet? That's Who's that? Spike with an S. Spike. Okay. <laughs> okay. I never really put it together that those names are so similar. <laughs> well, I didn't either until uh, just now. Wow. Well, all right. I'll tell you what else aired on uh, on this night on this great Monday night. The Married with Children series finale on Fox. Boy, oh boy. Now, what that was the end of an era because the premiere of Married with Children aired on the first ever night of the Fox network, Logan. Wow. Yeah. And now it's wrapping up. I think it's like season 11 or 12 or something like that ending. And uh, boy, oh boy, was I, I I really wasn't allowed to watch that show when I was a kid. So I didn't watch a bunch. But one of the producers of it was my professor in college. And he was a dick. (laughs) But he he was nice to me, but he was a dick to everyone else. Yeah. I got something. Austin Powers kicked off the weekend prior to this episode. These these are episodes are always on Mondays, yeah. and so we get like at right after the weekend. And Austin Powers came out Friday. It did, but it didn't debut in first place, bro. It came in what second. Was? The big release that weekend was Breakdown. Uh, do you know that movie? I've heard of that, dude. If you don't have that movie on your list, it's time to add that shit. It might, it might be. Because that movie fucking rules, dude. It's Kurt Russell and he and his wife. They're like on a trip. They're like driving out in the Southwest or something. Yeah, it's on my list. Yeah, all right. And then the they like their car breaks down, hence the title Breakdown, Logan. And <laughs> I thought it might be a dance film. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Kurt Russell in a dance film. I'd watch it. Um but uh, so the wife, the, a trucker stops, right? Played by J.T. Walsh. And the trucker is like, I'll take you down the road a ways to this diner. And uh, so Kurt Russell's going to stay with the car, right? The lady goes with J.T. Walsh to the diner. What? That seems like the dumbest thing. Well, imaginable. it was. It was because then she goes missing. Oh, my right? God. And then 
he re later runs into JT Walsh and JT Walsh claims not to know who he is and to not remember this interaction. What's what going a fucking on? Nightmare. It is a fucking nightmare. What a great film. Excellent. All right. Um, Maybe I'll watch it. You today. should. It's fucking fantastic. You you won't regret it. All right. But uh, th so that's TV and movies. What's going on in the news? I'll tell you. Eddie Murphy just got caught with a transsexual prostitute. <laughs> Everyone's really? talking about it. Yeah, you don't. You didn't know that. I never ever heard about that. That was a big deal. The two big prostitution scandals of the late '90s were Hugh Grant getting caught with a prostitute while he was like engaged to Elizabeth Hurley, and Eddie Murphy getting caught with a transsexual prostitute. And then the, all the big news was like, "Is Eddie Murphy gay?" And it's like, "No, it was a lady." We just didn't understand trans people back then. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um. Here's the other big news in sports, Logan. Yep. The Whalers, the Hartford Whalers of the NHL are moving to Carolina to become the Carolina Hurricanes. That's exciting. That was exciting. And but uh, another end of an era cuz the Hartford Whalers were a big deal when I was a kid, man. They were a good team. I still don't really understand why that happened. Why did Hartford have to lose their team? Because they're called Hartford. Well, they're in Connecticut. They're, they could have just been like the Connecticut Whalers. But no, we had to give a team to fucking Carolina, the bullshit state that lost my baggage on the way out to Las Vegas. Well, it makes a lot of sense. It's probably a much bigger market. Yeah, I guess, but NH... I guess you're right. All right. NHL was trying to expand at this time. I'm just a purist. I'll tell you what else was going on in the world of music, Logan. Wow, so many, so many things this day. Yeah. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducted their 12th class of, of stars. And that included the Bee Gees, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the Jackson Five, Joni Mitchell, and Parliament Funkadelic. What an all-star crew. I'm sure wow. the concert was something to behold that year. Probably no Jackson Five though. I can't really picture that. But uh, all right, so that was that was May fifth, nineteen ninety seven. You know, I, I did a lot of research. Yeah, that was good. Should I play any of those artists instead of Big since we played that I last week? I know we can't play Hypnotize again. We'll see if anything comes up over the course of the show. But yeah, you well, can... we just had five great artists Fuck inducted off. into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can play some Bee Gees if you want. Sure. All right, I'll figure it out. Play to love somebody. That's my favorite BG song. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. Let's get into the puppet show. Mm -hmm. Who wrote the episode? Rob Dezotel and Dean Batali. Those were the fellows who would later decamp to that 70s show. Yep. They gave us Owen, if you guys remember. They, they did. Yeah. That was their first episode. Never kill a boy on the first date. Um, and if you want to hear me talk about that 90s show, which I watched in its entirety, stay tuned oh, for, wow. hey, I'm watching here tomorrow. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. That, they dropped the whole season of that? Oh, yeah. Netflix. I watched all eight episodes or whatever it was. Have you watched ten. any of that Peacock, Ryan Johnson show? Not yet. I'm waiting until it's over, but I will. Oh, interesting. I kind of wanted to do it, but then I didn't. What about The Last of Us? You watch any of that? I'm waiting until it's over, bro. Wow, you're not That's succumbing to the hype? I'm not succumbing to the pressure. I heard one review said, I cried through the entire third episode of The Last of Us. And I'm like, I'll see it in a few months, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you'll be the judge cry. of that. Yeah. All right. Um, the director of this episode is a lady. So it was probably a little easier on <laughs> Chris McCarpenter and SMG than it was most weeks. Uh, Ellen S. Pressman is the director. She only directed two episodes of Buffy. The next one's next season. and uh, But she's still working to this day. She made a TV movie last year with Heather Locklear, and she directed a few episodes of Riverdale. I guess this was probably the writer's fault, but this is the episode where we have the like predator dummy. Yeah, so that's that wasn't right. very women-friendly of Ellen S. Pressman. Yeah, but, you know, nothing was women-friendly at this time. <laughs> if you were a woman in Hollywood, you were just fucking surviving, dude. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, but uh, Pressman, I thought, did a good job with it. 
I, I bought the dummy shit. I bought uh, into Sid. A little bit. A little bit. All right. A few of the action scenes I thought were pretty, pretty bad. Like when that chandelier, that like when the chandelier falls on Buffy. And then a Coda commercial come back. She's just under it. Yeah, <laughs> that is pretty bad, dude. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Let's get into Logan's notes. Why don't you scroll them, bro? All right. Well, we open up and we're at the talent show. I guess like talent show rehearsals, not the actual talent show. We see that at the end of the episode. But Giles, Mr. Charles, he's the <laughs> producer of the talent show because we meet our new principal. Of our the... new Fuhrer, as Giles calls him. <laughs> That's right. What does that mean exactly? That's what people used to call Hitler in the, you know, during oh. World War II. Lots of Hitler references on this show. That's true. That we see some swastikas in the next episode. Yeah. And in the previous episode, we had when they hacked the computer. He, they wrote the oh, paper. Oh, yeah, you're right. How... That's three consecutive episodes with Hitler references. I don't know what's going on in this writer's room. Yeah, and I didn't even know that. I didn't even know this was a Hitler thing. But, yeah, we meet Principal Snyder. And by like, S-N-Y, like Zack Snyder. That's right. Not not E-I. Or S-N-I-D-E-R, which is another spelling of Snyder. Who is that? I don't know. I've seen yeah. that. I'm not really familiar with that. But... <laughs> Yeah. So he. So what happened? He made Giles be the the producer so that he would like get to know the students more because he's always just like in the library. Yeah. Um. I think uh, Snyder doesn't like Giles. He's like skeptical of Giles because he's hanging around just these troublemaking. I'm skeptical kids. of Snyder. Yeah. Well, I don't you know should if this be, guy's bro. good. If he's bad, he's like hiding, lurking. Well, in what do you mean? You don't know he... if he's good or bad. He's bad. Oh, he's for sure. He's bad. an asshole. But I mean, he's like a villain bad, I mean. Oh, oh, well, that remains to be seen, yeah. Yeah, because he's like, he's like, he's like giving Buffy, like meets Buffy when she's like in the like tunnels or whatever, or wherever she is. He's yeah. like, what are you doing? And he's like real creepy. Yeah, I but know. I also but think that was setting him up as a possible villain for this episode. Right, right. But he's not, so. No, he's I not. It's so. the magician kid. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, so they're at the talent show and, and. Buffy and those guys, the, the, our gang, they're like making fun of everybody. So Snyder's like, all right, so you guys also have to be in the talent show because you guys need some school spirit. I don't know what the point of that was, but well, what's to get them involved? He, he says they're always getting into scrapes and I need to keep an eye on these people. All right. That's right. But so we meet uh, our two new characters of the episode. We meet Morgan and we meet his ventriloquist dummy sid and i am team sid what about you well i certainly don't like morgan he seems like a creep sid's not a creep the, the talking dummy but he's not a dummy bro because it turns out that he was a vampire hunter that got turned into a dummy so you yeah, can't like an old he man. can't help being horny he like has a cock he hasn't been able to use since like the 30s no, that's a good point. I didn't really, I didn't really put that together. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're absolutely right. So then, go backstage or like locker room, whatever it is. There's a girl that I guess her talent is ballet because she has some ballet shoes. I guess ballet <laughs> slippers they call it. Yeah. And so she puts them in her locker. She turns around. Boom! She's dead. Credits. Boom! She's dead. <laughs> Credits. Yeah. You still feeling good about the theme song? Oh yeah, I still love it. All right, great. never skip it. Not not one time. Me neither. Um, but like, can I say something about during the credits? I think there's a shot of Sarah Michelle Gellar where she looks a little like Ana de Armas. I'll keep an maybe eye out. Maybe for I'll try it. and send it. Why to you. do you think she looks like that? Because right. she's got a slightly receding chin. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like the 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 lips thing that she's doing. It's like when it says her name in the credits. Ana de Armas' defining feature to me is her chin. I think I know what you're talking about, though. The shot where she's got bangs. I feel like she probably has bangs a lot. She had them very... Does she still have them? She definitely had them in the early episodes. Well, they're starting to change right. because um, I read that uh, right after season one of Buffy, she goes off to film I Know What You Did Last Summer, and they're asking her to change her oh. hair. So she's wearing, like, extensions in episode 10. Of this season? Yeah. Oh, no. Wait, of... Of nightmares, yeah, like her hair is slightly different in nightmares because if I know you. Oh shit! Summer. It's getting lighter. I didn't even notice that. Goddamn. Um. Okay. Well. Anyway, so 
Snyder, he has a few good lines. He says he's not the liberal type, like uh, like our old pal Principal yeah. Flutie. Was that his yeah, name? that kind of woolly-headed liberal thinking leads to you getting eaten or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I kind of like this guy. Snyder? So, Snyder's a great character. Much better principal yeah. for the show. Yeah, yeah, Flutie kind of sucked. He had, he had like four scenes, and all the scenes, I kind of didn't like him. He was okay. Well, his best scene is when he gets eaten. Really? What about when he's at the zoo? That's kind of fun. <laughs> it's the same episode, yeah. That's a better scene, I think. I guess, right. fine. Anyway, so... W- I like the scene come- in the pilot. Wait, I like the scene in the pilot where Flutie rips up her, her transcript and then tapes it back together when he sees what a bad student she is. Yeah, no. Whatever. Um, so we, we learned that Emily, the girl that died, she was stabbed so it was not a vampire situation so now it's like what do you do because she hunts down like vampires and other things not like human serial killers wasn't her heart removed though yeah yeah right i don't know why you'd automatically think that's a human doing that it seems kind of ritualistic to me i think because they used a knife yeah i guess so it wasn't like claws or some shit um so then the, what they do next is they start to interrogate everybody at the talent show because they're like, all right, obviously this was like an inside job at the talent show. She was odd. She was like working at the talent show or whatever. So that's what they do. They interview everybody and they learn everything's going back to, to these guys, Morgan and Sid. That's right. Pretty much everyone leads them to Sid except for Cordelia who's interviewed by Xander and just annoys Xander. Yeah. Cordelia... Uh, I feel like we sort of lost it with Cordelia. I feel like in the next episode, it's pretty good with her nightmare situation. But I need they need to pump it up a little bit more with Cordelia. We were That's we fair. were like I was really go I was really. I'll on tell her you what. I'll tell you bit. what. Next week you get a lot of good Cordelia in both. Okay, episodes. perfect. But uh, perfect. I'm excited. Her, her best moment in this one is she sings the greatest love of all at the beginning of the episode, and uh, oddly, not the last time you'll hear her sing that. Okay. Her, yeah, her thing in this episode was like she kept asking Giles to change the order of the talent show so she wouldn't have to perform after somebody else because she was singing like a because the tone would be different. Yeah, or something. I like that's this, like her whole thing. Which, I like the uh, scene where Giles uh, says there's something wrong with her hair and and that it realized. And then he says that's a tactic he learned from Xander to get rid of Cordelia. Yes, I, I like that too, especially because in the next episode we learn her nightmare is like her hair gets all frizzy. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of weird connections between this one and the next one. Because like yeah. Xander's afraid of like a mime in this episode, and then he's afraid of clowns in the next one, which checks out. And uh, I don't know. I feel like they're and Willows has stage fright in this episode, and that shows up in the next one too. And when Buffy is sleeping in her room and the dummy shows up and her mom's like, oh, it's probably just a nightmare. And then the next episode is called Nightmares and it's about everyone having nightmares. Sure. That scene spooks me out, man. I don't like that little sa- the sound of the little legs moving. A little tippy tap. Oh, my running. God. Yeah, that freaks me out. Yeah, pretty scary. Um, so they Buffy goes to to not Sid. What's the guy's name? Morgan. She goes to Morgan's locker and she punches the little uh the little uh combination dial out. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Showed a little bit of superpowers. That's that right. Neat. And Snyder uh catches her. Yeah. Freaking Snyder. Um so what what happens next, D Train? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I thought we were going through your notes. We uh, are, but that then what happened? Um well they need to get Morgan alone without the dummy. So they uh, Xander takes the dummy from that teacher's room after the teacher confiscates it. Oh, right. Yeah. Did you think that was a little like child's play, too? A little bit. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, and then Xander's pretty funny with the the uh, dummy. He says, oh, yeah. Red Rom. That was ad lib ad lib by Nicholas. Brendan. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Great job. Um. By the way, I did say a few weeks ago in that witch episode when Amy was breaking in that room with that axe, I made the here's Amy joke and they could have done that because the shining does exist in this universe. So they could have <laughs> she could have said here's Amy. Of course she could have. Do you, you you saw this as proof that the shining exists in this universe? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. 
Sure. Um, anytime I watch a movie, I kind of feel like it's all, they're all in different universes until they sort of specify what's what. I don't feel that way ever. I mean, I wonder. <laughs> I mean, if I'd be wondering that if maybe like Jack Nicholson was in Buffy, but he's clearly not. Unless it's like like Armageddon, like six like sixteen million years ago, and it shows Earth. I don't even know what planets that they're on. It's Earth. They have to show me. Yeah, but they have to show me like the beginning of Armageddon. Oh, I get it. Or, or yeah. else I have no idea. <laughs> sure. Anyway, yeah, we get the red rum thing, and then we basically learn that we learn about the dolls. Dolls harvest organs to become real people, right? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, they learn of. So they're doing research. They find that there's these demons that need hearts, that need like organs to come into play. But also like it's not unprecedented for like someone to get turned into a a doll and then need organs. So they're like, who needs all these organs? What's going on? Yeah. So anyway, so then Buffy goes off and she fights Sid and they have that great the moment with the chandelier falls on her and they go to yep. commercial and it comes back. Um, they had that weird moment. What do you think about that? Where he, where she's like, you're never going to become human. And he's like, you're not either. And they're like, what? Well, yeah, because we're operating under the belief now where Sid, Sid is not responsible for these organs. OK, he's an ex demon hunter who's been turned into a dummy at some point in his life. And he thinks that Buffy is the demon because he's seen her do like superhuman shit. And oh yeah, and she's nubile. Ugh, I hate that line. And uh and then Thanks Buffy, Dean and Rob. Yeah, Dean and Rob, you fucking perverts, dude. I hope they didn't have a lot of interaction with underage Mila Kunis on the set of that 70s show. Jesus. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's uh, that's why they have that moment. I think it's okay. Yeah. That, yeah. In the moment, I was like, I hated it. But then afterward, when I was like, okay, well, I guess he didn't know. So that makes sense. But in the moment, I was like, that's so stupid. But yeah. All right. But so then they have to join anyway. forces, you know, they... they find some common ground yeah so they join they join forces and they decide they're going to go to the talent show and line everybody up in like a circle i guess it's not a line if it's a circle is it so but they they get everybody and they they put them on stage so they can count to see who is uh who is there who's not yeah because whoever's missing that is the demon but nobody's missing nobody's missing but then buffy finds backstage a brain one of the so worst we, looking props in Buffy history. Yeah, it, it was pretty <laughs> bad. And it, yeah, that was that was pretty bad. I don't know. This episode, I don't think it was that great. I don't think it was that amazingly directed. Interesting, but. interesting. You're saying women can't uh, direct as well as men? I'm just saying, the, 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 a lot of the doll stuff, I don't think was done well. That brain was done pretty poorly. I thought the doll stuff was done fine. The, yeah, the brain is bad, and the chandelier thing is bad. There's a couple little set pieces that don't work in this episode. Oh, I did want to say, I thought that uh, Morgan was, was pretty good when he goes in the teacher's room and is, like, freaking out. Of, like, it's, like, an addiction. Like, he needs the yeah. he needs the dummy out of the cabinet. I thought he was pretty good there. I know, but... I don't know if you're going to give him LVP or what. But, but after learning, isn't he such a loser? Like, after learning that he doesn't really have any connection to the dummy, like, the dummy's just, like, a dude he's been hanging around with that was a former demon hunter. Like, Morgan, like, he's up, bro. Um, I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that is that is weird. Yeah, from his perspective, what what did, what did he think was going on? Yeah, they make it. They make you think like he has some sort of weird psychic connection to the dummy because they show him like rubbing his head around the dummy and shit. But really, like Morgan has nothing to do with the dummy except he owns it. Did he like it? Did he dislike it? I don't really understand. I think he was just using it. To, to to be a great ventriloquist. <laughs> That's a weird dynamic. I didn't really it's a very weird dynamic, it. yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh, very odd. So, yeah, so we learned the brain. We find the brain. So then we learned that the body is not actually taken over or something. So the person would not be missing. So they're actually still on the hunt for a body. So, oh, they learned that because in the computer, 
this is actually pretty dark stuff. They they realize that the guy, uh, what was his name? Morgan. Sorry, Morgan. He had missed like 40 days of school. And so they learned he had brain cancer because like one of his contacts was a, like a surgeon or something. And so this kid has brain cancer. Oh, so he that, was gonna so die. that explains him rubbing his head because he had brain cancer. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, this yes, so he was going to die anyway. So his brain episode, was bad. Dude. So the dummy didn't want that brain. So the dummy wants a better brain, a smarter brain. So who is the dummy go to, D Train? Mr. Charles. Mr. Charles. And you might, they think Willow at first because Willow says something. She's like, they're like, oh, you're so smart. Oh my God, Willow, you're so smart. <laughs> but no, it's Giles. And Giles. This is why Giles gets the LVP what? this episode for me. He is so dumb. He's just like, all right, I'll get in this contraption, little magician oh, I, guy. You're right. Cut my that head is, off. That's pretty bad, dude. That's a, it's a, it's a demerit. This on, guy's the real uh, on Giles's record, I would say. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? Yep. Like LVP. A, Sorry. Lawnmower outside. You hear that? No, I don't hear that. All right, good, good. Let's continue. I haven't heard any, like, uh, police since you've moved to Vegas. That's been nice. Well, of course, yeah. I mean, like... I really thought about that. Crime isn't enforced out here. So, yeah, I like this one moment. They're fighting the magician. The magician eventually, like, uh, they re- they realize the magician's Who's the bad guy. barely gosh. in they're... the episode. Like, if the magician... But he is in it enough. He's not, though. What, what, you see Giles interrogate him and have him pick a card, and... Like, what else? Where else does he show up? I don't know. I feel like another point. He's uh, he's just sort around. of around. Uh, he should be more of a character, I think. Yeah, possibly. But yeah, so but the magician, I like I like the moment where they put they shove him in the box and then he comes out as the vamp, as the like the demon or whatever. Yeah, that, that was that was good stuff. Uh, but yeah, they defeat the guy and then they are forced to read uh, Oedipus. That's right. It's the only episode of Buffy for the entire series with an outro. Oh, right. It, it fades out and then it comes back, right? Yeah. Like af- after the executive like a producer, post-credit Joss scene. Whedon credit, there's some more shit, which never happens again or before this. Yeah. Um, that was pretty good. I didn't like Willow being like running off. Oh, oh, she's got oh, stage fright, thing. bro. Yeah. Wait, did you bring that up? Yeah. Because cause that's another thing that goes into the next exactly, episode. That's yeah. a good point. Setting it up. Uh. Wow. All right. So not bad. Um, I will give it three stars. All right. I'm going to give it a two. I do think you missed a couple things. Um, I want to... Uh, Should have brought it up as we went. Well, there's just like one point that I want to make, which is like this is the first time that they talk about previous Slayers on Buffy. Like we know that in every generation there's a slayer and when one slayer dies another is called but this is the first time we get an anecdote about a previous slayer which is something that'll happen a lot more on the show uh because sid the dummy claims to have fucked a hot korean slayer in the 30s that's right yeah that's right so uh yeah i I just wanted to clock that do we ever meet her that specific one i want to say no I want to say no, but um, but we do meet plenty of Slayers and flashbacks and shit. Um, and uh, I also wanted to say that Sid is a playable character in a Buffy video game. Yes, I think you did tell me that. I told you point. that off air, but yeah, there was uh, around season seven of Buffy, they put out a video game. And it's weird because it's not like they really did it like a deep dive into characters. It's like you could play as like Buffy and Willow and like Sid. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, well, all right, so you give it two stars. I give it three stars. I give my MVP to Buffy. And of course, you give every fucking MVP to Buffy. I'll give my MVP to Snyder. What the fuck? Just because it's his first appearance. I like him. Um, yeah, he's okay. Sorry, I'm trying to load this here. All right, so I'll give my MVP to Giles just for being a big dum-dum and getting in that contraption with sure. his little brain. I'll I'll give LVP to Morgan for rubbing his head a lot. <laughs> Come on, didn't break it. <laughs> uh, I ranked this episode, by the way, uh, eighth place out of ten. 
I guess I won't say where I ranked the other one yet, but I ranked this between Never Kill a Boy on the First Date and I, Robot, You, Jane. What do you think about that? I think that's fine. Uh, I have I, Robot, You, Jane last, right? Yes, you do. Okay, what's next on that list? Never Kill a Boy on the First Date. Right, yeah, that's where I wanted to in between those two. But, all right, perfect. So we agree on that. Um, all right, ne- next episode.